Alright guys, I know there hasn't been that many videos as of late, and the reason being is because I've been very busy getting parts cars. So, there's two reasons to get a parts car. One, if I'm working on a C3 or someone else's C3, and I need a part, I can go out into the yard and get it. It's really, really convenient. And two, uh, most parts cars, well, they have pretty valuable parts on them. I'm able to sell them, make a little bit of money, so I can continue on uh, with the old car projects that you see. And that's Chopstick. Buddy, what are you doing? Oh, you want me to pet you? You don't want me to make videos? Is that what you want? Like that? Alright guys, so I'm going to take you around. I have, I think, five or so uh, parts cars that I'm going to show you. Even though the cars are pretty much beyond restoration, uh, the stories are actually pretty interesting. And I'll show you guys some tips of uh, stuff to look for if you're looking for a Corvette to buy to, to uh, avoid. Uh, things like bent frames, stuff like that. So we're going to start with the one that's behind me, which is a, a beige 79. Nudo, were you bad? Did you rip up a piece of cardboard in the yard? Did you do that? Yes, you did. All right. So this is a 19, or was a 1979 Corvette, and according to the owner's uh, story, it was uh, being driven at a high rate of speed, uh, someone turned in front of them, they swerved to miss that person, and because of that, the car went sideways into a curb. So we have a busted bumper, a busted fender, uh, outer and inner. We have, it had a broken tie rod, I had to put a tie rod on it in order for it to actually roll up on the trailer. It got a broken uh, sway bar link. The control arms are super, super duper bent and just all out of whack. Uh, has broken ball joints. And the best part is it has like four bends in the frame. So this right here, this bend right here and right here, all aren't supposed to be there. So that's all from that one big whack. Uh, this is actually a factory little divot. I'll show that to you on a different one. But because of that, the car wasn't really worth restoring. Even though it really was a nice car when it was wrecked, it's like, look, you're going to have to either replace that frame rail or do a whole frame. And all the quotes that they got for it were just ridiculously a lot of money. You might as well just buy a whole other car. So, like you can see, the damage went from the front fender all the way, damaged the bottom of this door, damaged this fender and also bent the crap out of the control arm that was back here. I ended up cutting it off and selling it because somebody needed a few parts and they didn't need a really good control arm. But you can see where even where the wheel hit the frame and didn't even dented it that hard. So uh, a lot has been sold off this car. It still has a motor and transmission in it, but it had a really nice interior. And as you can see, it's pretty much almost all gone. I was, I do still have the seats and a couple little odds and ends here in the back, but that's about it for this car. Sorry guys, this uh, rear wing is sold. It's going to my little brother's 79. But uh, the right side of the frame is probably in really, really good shape. And you can see this whole right side of the car is in pretty nice shape. I just sold a, a brake caliper off of this car today, so that's why it's up on blocks. But believe it or not, the headlight uh, frames on this car aren't broken, which I was totally amazed. You see these little arms, there's one on each end, and they like to break right here when anything gets hit at all in the front. Since it slid into a curb in the side, uh, it saved the headlights, so those are still good. All right, next we have what's left of a 1978. I might have included this on uh, a previous video, but I want to show you guys a few little tidbit odds and ends. So this came with the car. As you can tell, the car had been hit really hard on the left-hand side. Okay. And let me remove this really, really quick. With that gone, I can show you guys a few uh, little things to, to see on to know if a car has been wrecked. So a lot of time the front end hits, they hit this crash bar which then sends all that kinetic energy into the very front of the frame. And with that, these welds right here under the control arms love to break. This is characteristic of a 
front end crash that does not include the um, let's get back in there that does not include the suspension see how that one's broken so this body or this frame I'm pretty sure it's fairly decent of a frame but uh, you can tell that it has had some kind of impact to it uh, other than that there's really mu not much left to this one I got a couple trailing arms yep got a couple trailing arms on this one uh, a rear body it might be good for something never really ever came with any kind of interior or anything like that and this is pretty much how I bought it but you know I'm about the only guy who would have ever bought this car but I've made money on it so it's not too bad and the good part is it's gonna go save you know other Corvettes that need parts from it it's not really worth anybody's time this car right here all right next we have somewhat of a rare sight we have a 68 coupe now I'm gonna tell you right now this car is not a parts car okay I'm not gonna cut up a chrome bumper car that somebody could potentially fix uh, this car has all the parts that you're that are missing except for the engine and transmission they're in two big tubs inside of my shop um, but somebody gutted it for paint or gutted it for restoration I don't know but it used to be a pretty nice car it was a silver car with black interior um, but it's all there the frame straight the body straight it's not too bad of a car since there's no damage there's not really much to talk to <laughs> about on this car but I am selling it so if you're interested in it uh, feel free to email me I do have it up on Craigslist right now Here's another Project 78 that I'm, or 70, yeah, 78 that I might get to. Uh, I might sell it whole, but I haven't decided yet. This is the car that I've been chasing for, I think, since like 2010. I knew where it'd been, and finally the lady sold it to someone else who then sold it to me. So, the moral of the story is if somebody asks for your car and you're not ready to sell it, just sell it to them because eight years later, there's a potential that same person's gonna end up with it anyway. So, enough about that. Next we have a what is left of a 75. This is another one of those sad stories. About 20 years ago, the car was running and driving just fine. Got taken apart for restoration and then left outside. So you can see all of the fiberglass fibers in this front clip. That's what happens when the sun uh, beats down on it for super, super long. Uh, all the gel coat gets burned away and what's left is just raw fiberglass. So this car has a really, really nice frame. Uh, a fairly decent body but the problem was when I got it the guy who had it before me took the engine transmission out and he also cut the floor out of the car he had a car with metal floors and had rust in him so he thought it was a good idea to cut this fiberglass floor out and then just bond it over his old floor which is like really anyway super bad idea but it still uh, has lots of good parts in it and I got it for a really decent price so it's kind of really ugly. It looks more like a like a cheetah than a Corvette, but it'll make a good donor for a lot of people. I'm hoping to sell the frame out of it this weekend. We'll see what happens with that. All right, next we have. It's actually really sad. This car is the same story as this one. Running and driving and stopping 10, 15 years ago. This is a L82 four-speed 74 with air and tilt column. A nice car not and it has a rear uh, defog I believe or maybe that's the other one anyway but originally yellow on black somebody painted it maroon on black back in the day but like everything that always happens it was pulled apart for restoration and this is how they sit so the way I see it if your car already runs and drives keep it running and driving or you end up with something like this so it has no motor, has no transmission, the interior is completely gutted, everything came in boxes and boxes. You know what, let's just, you know, they gutted everything in the front end, took the bumpers off, took the AC out, they gutted the dash. I mean, it's just like, like the headlights out, and it's just like, no. So, yes, yeah, somebody uh, very, very motivated, and somebody with a lot of time and money could bring this car back, but... It's going to be a parts car just because I don't have time for it and it has a lot of valuable parts on it. So it's kind of a sad story, but hey, I'm not the one who took it apart. But it has an awesome tilt column, 
It has a nice set, really nice set of uh, aluminum slot wheels on it and a really nice, perfect, four speed, straight, rust free 74 frame, which is worth quite a bit of money. Moving over to this 74, and then after that we'll go to that 74, they just get progressively worse. So this 74 is kind of a bubba job. So somebody's just kind of hacked it together over time. And the main hack that they did was somebody put an 80 to 82 style front end on it. And then they proceeded to wreck it. So it's just a big hodgepodge of parts. But you know what? It still has lots of good stuff. The main problem is they wrecked it hard enough that it separated the front clip from the firewall right there. But it did more than that. It broke a lot of the firewall down this middle part right here. So it's a little bit more of a than, oh, just throw a new front clip on it and throw an engine transmission and it'll be good. No, not really. It also doesn't have a title. There's the front bumper to it or what's left of it. So they hit that sucker hard. I don't know what they hit. Here's a little sneak peek of a car you haven't seen yet. Uh, this is a 78 Camaro I picked up out of a business about a mile from my house and I paid $300 for it. So I'm not sure if this car is going to be a project on the channel or not. I'm still trying to figure out how to get a title for it. It didn't have a title. But what I like about it is that it has factory paint all over it. You can see right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. It says Jack Williams Fort Worth. Okay, so it's been in Texas its whole life. Somebody worked at IT in this car and then proceeded to let it sit outside forever. Even though it's been outside forever, the floors are really, really nice. The trunk is really, really nice. And the body is just gorgeous. All the wheel lips, all the rockers, all the fenders. This one's kind of wrinkly, but all that stuff is rust free. So if I did this car on the channel, it would probably be, I don't know, it would be a, hey, let's get this back on the road using all used parts with the exception of anything rubber and fluids, ready go. So it would be a super duper budget build just for the fun of it, just to see if I could do it. But there's no motor, no transmission. It was originally a 305 uh, 350 automatic car. So nothing super special. It's not a, you know, it's uh it's not a Z28, it's just a sport coupe, um, but you know, it is what it is. So inside it's got a bunch of parts and it's missing the seat, the front seat, but the trunk is just super duper full of more parts. So I think it'd be a really fun car, but I'm not going to put the money into it until I can find a title. All right guys, you ready for the worst car? The last car on the tour of parts cars is this 74 that I got a couple days ago. It is the roughest and the ugliest car I have ever bought in my entire life, so check it out. This at one point in its life was a 74 Corvette, but it is no longer uh, worthy of that classification. <laughs> so first we'll start in the front. This car was wrecked super, super hard like way hard. Let me show you the kind of things I'm talking about. So you see this? This is supposed to be straight up and down. And look at this control arm. Do you see how bent this part right here is supposed to be like this? I mean, that's just, and that's thick metal. You've got to hit that stuff super hard in order to get it to do that. So that control arm is just whacked. The tie rod end is gone. And the crazy part is that if you look over here, on the other side of the control arm, or the other control arm, that one's whacked too. Whacked really, really hard. The frame, though, I feel like isn't too bad. I mean, I feel like it was mostly a suspension hit. But let me remove this. Let me show you. And you can see that control arm, just how whacked it is, how bent. And then both, both mounts for both uh, lower control arms have been ripped away from the frame. There's another one right there. I mean, just totally destroyed. So if that wasn't bad enough, check out the bodywork on this car. So some Bond, I call them Bondo artists. Some Bondo artists had their way with this car. So there's a huge patch here. There's a bunch peeling off down here. 
you got just bondo bondo and they you know shot primer over all this bondo I mean look at this but it gets worse or should I say it gets better so you walk over here you look at this you're like what is that you're like well it looks like duct tape I'm like, no that's not duct tape you know what that is that's like siding metal like flashing or what you put on a house okay and they riveted the shape of what they wanted the fender to be right here and then they riveted that to what's left of the fender and I guarantee you what they were going to do is just bondo and make a brand new fender top to bottom on this car I'm kind of glad they didn't you know why because cars don't deserve to be treated like that <laughs> so anyway I've never seen something like this you don't fix fiberglass with metal and bondo guys you fix it with more fiberglass so you know stuff like this I mean it's just like the worst condition Corvette I've ever seen there's even you know bondo underneath the rear window up under there there's bondo everywhere the, all the brown you see is just skim bondo all over the car you go around this side more big bondo patches all over the car I'm not sure what color this car even used to be and it looks like it was black at one time and maybe primer another time I don't know but you know they hit it hard enough that it you know busted that fender that's all gone frame looks okay now that I'm looking at it closely and believe it or not the headlights actually survived with the exception of the top lid on that far one which is good because those are worth a decent amount of money I haven't taken it off the trailer yet because I don't have room for it in the yard I need to sell something before I get that far oh that's right that one doesn't open alright going inside though I mean it has a lot of the interior still in it so not a bad thing all that stuff's worth something what is this bondo on the no that's just the vinyl peeling up it looks like it used to be maybe it was red at one point I have no idea usually you can tell on the door jams and stuff what color the car used to be but not this one so the one cool thing about this car did you see that that's the rare rear window defogger that came in the, I believe it was uh, pretty much all the early Corvettes up until 76 or 7 when they went to the, uh, the little metal lines in the back glass. So there's a blower motor behind that panel with a heat element in it that you turn on, it starts blowing and it blows hot air across that back glass. But that stuff's hard to find, they didn't make very many of them because people figured you know, it's almost a vertical piece of glass. When are you ever going to get ice on a vertical piece of glass? So, rough. But there's all kinds of goodies in these cars. It wouldn't be complete without showing this caddy. It looks a lot more sad than it did when it first made the debut on the channel. But I've sold quite a bit of stuff off of it. And I've taken even more off for my Cadillac. Uh, which some of that you've seen on the channel. But it's getting to the point where I'm almost done pulling stuff off of it. But if you see anything that you need, if you have a 56 Caddy, let me know. I got a whole trunk, you know, full of engine parts and goodies and all kinds of stuff. So, yep, all kinds of stuff. We did end up taking the cylinder heads off of this engine. And if you remember before in one of the Cadillac videos, if you remember before in one of the Cadillac videos that... I pulled the valve covers off this engine and it looked crazy, but you know, looking at the the cylinders in this, yeah, this engine was probably toast. I don't know, the, the cylinder walls were a lot more shiny before I took the heads off and you know exposed them to moisture and stuff like that. Oh, that hood is heavy. But I still need to take a few more parts off of this car. This hood is going to go on my 56 because the one I have has dents and bondo in it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if this seat, this is a six-way seat, so it adjusts up, down, back, forth, and then it tilts. I'm trying to see if I can get those motors and all that equipment to work on my seat and uh, convert it from a 
just a normal power seat to a six-way seat. We'll see. I haven't gotten the courage to jump in here and try to, uh, and try to, you know, get the seat out by myself. So it's still pretty nasty. And then the last thing I need to do is there's still that AC box in the back I need to take out. All right, guys, there are my parts cars and my uh, just another backyard tour, I guess. Uh, I do sell parts worldwide, whether it be Cadillac parts or Corvette parts. So if you see anything, uh, make sure you send me an email. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I would say send me a message on YouTube, but half the time people send me messages and I never hear back from them. Email seems like a better way to do it. So my email is in the description below. Also, if you guys want a sticker or uh, want to follow me on Instagram, you guys can. I do channel updates probably every day. So you'll get a little sneak peek into what's going on uh, at my shop every day. So that's pretty awesome. So I, all right guys, I appreciate all your uh, views. I appreciate all your support and I will see you guys next time.